All right, guys, we're here with Graham from CrossFit Perfectus. Uh, this is Richard, a dead on a mission on your daily podcast. So today we're going to talk to him a little bit about uh, what's going on next week. And let's go from there. So how's your preparation been going? Uh, <laughs> it's been going. Um, you know, preparation is, it's been tough because, um, you know, as doing CrossFit every single day, that's that's kind of my that's my main thing. So, yeah. being able to fit in an hour to two to three hour rowing session, plus CrossFit on top of that, or having energy to do CrossFit, I've been finding a little bit of a hard balance balance yeah, there. Yeah. But um, you know, making the rowing a little bit more of a priority on some days, making CrossFit a priority on other days. So, I've been trying to get in at least two training sessions during the week, um, at least ten thousand to fifteen thousand. Um, kind of just get myself over that hump a little bit, and then. Um, just kind of see what the pain threshold is like yeah. with uh, mixing in. I've actually tried to mix in some, wearing some gloves while I'm doing it. We've bought a butt pad. With but yeah, 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 I got a butt, butt pad. pad. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's been buying a butt pad to save their buns a little bit. But um, other than that, preparation has been going pretty good. Um, you know, we, we talked about this about six weeks ago when we yeah. first started preparation. Um, now it's just getting down to the wire. We're a little anxious, yeah. a little nervous, uh, maybe a little <laughs> it came, stupid. It came, it came down too quick, I must say. Yeah, it, it came quick, you know. So, um, you know, I would say the hardest part about um, getting prepared for this um, is just finding what's comfortable over a long period of time and then just being able to find some time to fit it in with, with also doing CrossFit and weight training and stuff like that. So. Uh, have you, like, I, I forgot to ask in, in the beginning, like, have you ever done anything like that it's, like, I want to say ultra, but like an endurance event type of like that? Um, like so the only endurance stuff that I've really done before is I've run three half marathons. Okay. Um, so two of those I trained for, and then one of those I just, um, they were, it was for an athletes in tandem, um, where we got together with a group. It was called athletes in tandem, and they actually, the, the athlete, um, we support um, a disabled athlete by, by pushing them, you know, pushing them during a whole half marathon. I wasn't the person who did that, but I was part of the race to, the race. to help raise money and awareness and stuff like that. So um, that was probably one of the hardest things I've done um, as far as it was the horse tooth half, which happens up in Fort Collins. Okay. And the first probably mile and a half of that is like a 10% grade, so it's nasty. And then you go downhill for about another couple miles, which <laughs> is really rough on the legs. So I did that marathon without half marathon without training at all. I will say though that was the, the my best time ever that I've ever done without um, any training at all. But I suffered for about three weeks afterwards. So <laughs> I, I just couldn't you walk. Pay the my, my, you paid the price. You paid the price. My yeah. legs, my feet, everything were just killing me. So I'm not a huge endurance athlete, but I'm I'm not opposed to doing endurance sports. Cause no, but you have at least some experience. Some experience know. with it, yeah. Kind of just being a, in a in a in a state of pain. You know, in a state of discomfort for an extended period of time, and trying to deal with that emotionally and physically. Yeah. So, yeah, emotionally, I think uh, uh, for me especially because it's my son too. Yeah. But uh, for me, uh, I I remember when I did the 35, like the 30, I, I did a 30,000 and felt good. Uh, the 35 was just a struggle, like mentally. But uh, I think on the on the day off, it's it's a whole different game. Right. But, you know, that's uh, the hard part with training is that, we, depending on what environment you train in, typically for me, it's by myself. So I don't have that, you know, I have the self-motivation, but sometimes it lacks yeah. because you're by yourself. You're, you're not communicating. You're not seeing other people. You're not getting distracted by that sort of thing. Exactly. So training sessions are kind of tough mentally, um, but I think if you can deal with the, the harder training, the mentality aspect of it during your training sessions, the day of the event with having that energy and having that vibe and other people around you and stuff like that, I think that'll definitely help out a ton. Yeah, so right now, how many people we have doing a solo? We have Ooh, Rob, we have, you, me. You know, that's three, and then we have Chris Salazar, and we have Alejandro, um, so that's five. That's five, so five guys are gonna be doing it solo. Five guys. Uh, there is uh, there is another gym that is gonna join uh, them. They're gonna do it on their own team. But uh, they also, I think there's one guy trying to do a solo. He's, he was on the fence. But five guys, that's a lot, I think, for... That's a lot uh, of guys. That's a lot of meters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, like for, for something like this out of nowhere and, you know, like not out of nowhere, but with, with a bigger purpose and something like that, it's pretty cool to see that it is, it is uh, cool. five you know, people joining. And not only do we have five people doing it solo, we have 
close to 15 to 20 people doing it as a, as a oh, yeah, four-person exactly, relay yeah. team. So we had a lot of people through Profectus um, want to spread some of that awareness and be part of this challenge, but they didn't necessarily think that they could commit the time or the training to it. Um, so what they did is they just put together, we put together four person teams and each person is going to row a chunk of the marathon to complete the marathon as a, as a team. So. Which that's pretty amazing too. Like I was pretty impressed because uh, one day I came to the gym and Graham was like, oh, I was like, you know, like, we have four teams. I was like, what? Yeah. I was literally not expecting because, you know, rowing a, that much, S it, sucks. even 10,000, <laughs> even 10,000 meters, it takes about 45 to 50 minutes and if you're going amazing. fast in right. a good pace. Right. And that's a lot for rowing, you know. Um, you know, when we, when we first talked about this as well, a couple, you know, about a month and a half ago when we first brought up this podcast, it was, you know, kind of train for a purpose and do things for a purpose other than yourself. And I think that's always been something that has stuck with me and then stuck with a lot of the people that are doing this as part of this relay team or solo it's you know it, it makes things that are so hard or maybe even possible a little bit easier to accomplish if you're doing it for a purpose other than yourself you, so you know like the higher power man yeah, yeah that's one thing i i always talk about it because i remember uh my first iron man uh i was talking to a friend that she said like you know you're gonna finish that iron man and after that your life is gonna change yeah because you're gonna go to so much not only mentally physically and spiritually but you're just gonna be like you know like things that you go through you're gonna start looking at okay you know what this is not as bad as you know like it could be worse than in you you just gain so much confidence and motivation and uh, uh overall just by finishing something like that so right. Uh, I think that the day of the the, the, the row is gonna be pretty cool. Oh, it's gonna, it's gonna everybody's be, so excited for it. It so. is. It's gonna be a roller coaster of emotions, you know, because we're gonna be all psyched up and geared up and ready to go. And then as you get into the row, you kind of doubt yourself a little exactly. bit, and then you kind of get get uplifted a little bit, and then you get doubt yourself a little bit, and then as the time and the meters tick away, you know, as you get closer to that goal, it's, I think it's gonna be pretty emotional for a lot of us. So now that you went through the training. Uh, do you have any expectations on what can you do and when, when, anything like that? Or? When we talked six weeks ago, I was having, I don't know where I got this number from, but I was thinking in my head that I could probably or wanted to do this in 310. Okay? As I started to get through my training, which I think that's the important aspect of one of the more, uh, more important aspects of training is that I started to see that if I was going to go out at that pace, I may not end up finishing the actual marathon. So through the training, I've learned that pace is better. I'm a big analytical guy. I like numbers. CrossFit is really based on a number and numbers and how fast and how, you know, pace and stuff like that. Um, I'm trying to keep myself now as, as opposed to doing it in a certain time. I'd like to definitely keep it under uh, three and a half hours if I can. Um, but I definitely, I'm, I'm going to look at the pace over time. So I'd like to keep like a 215 to 220 500 meter pace. So you're going to start at 215 to 220? Uh, well, I'll start off probably a little bit faster than that, and but I'd like to kind of get into a groove or a comfort zone around that 215 to 220 pace and see if I can manage that for the whole time. So getting back to, um, you know, I'm, the analytics part was very important to me at first, um, just from a personal standpoint, like, yes, I want to do it, but I want to do it well. Yeah. Um, now I'm just... I'm in that mode where I just want to complete it. And anything that I complete of this magnitude, I think regardless of what the numbers say, it's still a pretty cool accomplishment. So oh, yeah. I'm not so much focused on the numbers now um, as I was prior to, um, but I think that was just the way I'm wired, you know, mm -hmm. is to kind of go off of those yeah. numbers. So I, I'm dealing with the same issue because like my competitive side is like, you know what, you can go fast, you know, like let's start yeah. making everything for performance. And then I was like, no, 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 I just gotta, finish and you know like so it's kind of like a mixed emotion a part of it because it's like all right it's you gotta fight with you know i never done it and i on the podcast yesterday i was talking about that it's like i never and it wasn't yesterday it was two days ago i think uh, i was like this is totally different for me because like even though it's endurance and i'm like i've been endurance athlete for 12 plus years uh but I'm, I'm endurance like I'm seeing things different you know like right. I'm biking on the road I'm running on the road and you know like I'm swimming in the ocean it's a, like here I'm stuck in one spot <laughs> right. for right. close to four hours you know so this is gonna be the biggest challenge for me yeah it's, but it's gonna be hard 
there's a, a good effect for for me because like I perform really well with music mm -hmm. and you know Iron Man is not allowed to use music whatsoever right. so here I'm gonna be able to listen to Slayer my favorite band yeah, there you go. <laughs> so <laughs> it's gonna be different but, but what about you what's your uh, do you have a plan on that too or? yeah you know for me I just I'm gonna have a kind of a mix of everything as far as like music goes um, you know I like I like R&B and hip-hop um, so I know it sounds weird, like lifting an intense environment and yeah. listening to slow music. Um, that I, that's kind of what I, I like to to kind of calm my breathing and my heart rate by listening to songs and music like that. And then I'll probably throw in some old school stuff, some ACDC, some you know, some Slayer, you know, whatever things that are going to mix things up a little bit for me. The more I can be distracted, the less it's going to feel as, as pain, it's as yeah, painful, yeah. Um, and as long. So hopefully I can. We're gonna have a projector screen up here. We're gonna probably be playing a couple. Yeah, movies. I just saw that Rob post uh, yeah, what so. kind of movies we wanted, and then uh, right. uh, <clears throat> I was thinking like Rocky. He put a Rocky Balboa there. I think that's like a perfect, yeah. uh, uh, perfect thing to 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 listen to, right. uh, to watch. And then I just throw like maybe Star Wars too would be kind of nice. Right. Well, <laughs> but, you know, training like this is you have to train smarter, not harder. You know, exactly. you have to find. I don't want to start off within the first hour being so uncomfortable because then that's going to make the rest of the time extremely uncomfortable. Exactly. So I want to make sure that I have a butt pad. I want to make sure that I have gloves on. I want to make sure that I have some good music going on. I want to make sure that I don't have any loose items or anything that's going to be a distractor mm -hmm. because I feel like if, if I start off like that, I'm going to finish like that. Yeah. So I want to make sure that I have as minimal distractions as possible. I mean, good distractions, music, yeah, and music some, yeah. some, uh, you know, videos and stuff. But other than that, man, it's just going to be repetition after repetition yes. after repetition so now uh, I have to ask the butt that's a big issue right? <laughs> the butt the yeah, butt it, is it a big, can be that's a big a, issue. That's a big issue. <laughs> you know, like, I, I don't know about you, but with me, it's like, uh, when I start getting close to 10,000, I, every once, it's like, I put for 30 seconds my foot on the ground mm. just to kind of get the circulation up, and then I put it back on. It feels like uh, a different beast. It feel, yeah, it feels a, a whole different thing, but um, besides the butt pad, do you have any plans on what you do and you know because you, you what's the maximum you've done so far well the max i've done so far just in training is around twenty four thousand, a little less than 24 so i mean that's 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 a half marathon a little bit more than a, a half marathon so for some people um myself i feel like i indirectly train so many other things that i can still benefit yeah, by yeah, not yeah, specifically yeah, yeah. doing yeah. rowing i think the hardest part for me right now as far as the rowing goes is just my butt i mean yeah. that's just being straight up honest like the, the numbness and the pain and all that so like you were saying i think getting up intermittently for 20 seconds 30 seconds taking your feet out of the straps for 20 30 seconds putting the handle down shaking out the hands for 20, you know anything like that throughout the whole entire time i think that'll hope, hopefully make things a little bit more comfortable for us i have one one big worry on this whole thing that uh is going to the bathroom because like you know iron man I, I usually say actually it's one of the rules that I created for hydration It's like if you don't pee in the first hour of the bike you are dehydrated and then with time and that's my sound nasty for a lot of people but with time I learned how to pee on the bike right. I learned how to pee on the run uh, and then the swim of course everybody pee on the swim <laughs> <Right>. but <laughs> that's the easiest part but uh, no shame in that exactly <laughs> but I was thinking like because like if you leave the rower for too long, it zero it out. Right, right. So you know, um, they did this the rowing marathon, and they've done the half marathon in the games and re and, um, and regionals for CrossFit, and they had that. I, I don't even know what their parameters were on that, as far as like being able to get up and go to the bathroom. I think they allowed them to do that, but I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, because um, like you'll be hydrating, and at one point, right. It must come out, you know. Like, well, right, and for unless you severe dehydrated, but then if you severe dehydrated, it can cause you to not finish. Right, cramp up and, cramp up and, and uh, start getting a little delirious. But you know, I try not to during a lot of these events. Um, I try not to drink too much. Um, I just don't like to take the time. I don't like to feel that feeling of being too full or swishing around in yeah. my stomach. So, I think that may be a, a, a hard part for me is trying to just drink a little bit throughout each. Kind of rest interval or whatever yeah. so staying hydrated am i worried about having to go to the bathroom not really i mean if i have to get up and go then i'll just have to get up and go but yeah i think we're gonna have to have a, a volunteer to just to keep the rower you know like from right. zero and out exactly you uh, know if that means somebody gets on there and rows 100 meters for you while you're taking a 30 second pee or whatever i 
you know, I'm not, <clears throat> we have, we want to have some set rules and standards, but we also don't have to necessarily follow, follow what yeah, CrossFit and, did. And, and our health, it's that. the most important thing. Right, so if you feel like you're going to be dehydrated and you're only not drinking water because you feel like you're going to pee your pants, then I'd probably drink some water and then go, and to, then the go to the bathroom and deal yes. with that after that. Yeah. So. Yeah, because that's a, that's a really, uh, I think that's a really important thing that we need to put it out there. Cause especially going to be live and people see like, oh, he's not rowing. But yeah, and maybe like you take a 20, 30 second pee. Because I remember when I did a 35, I asked one of the guys here, I'm like, dude, can you just row for like a few seconds? Right. So I don't lose the, <laughs> right. the whole distance I've done it. Yeah, because you know? I think the screen shut off after like a probably like a minute or two minutes. Yeah. Once that flywheel and the internal flywheel slows down, it doesn't think that any work is being performed. So it freezes the screen. <clears throat> then if you don't pick that work back up within a short period of time, it's just going to freeze it. it or gonna, it's going to erase it. Yeah. Erase it. So, so that, that's a, a, um, a very important thing yeah. to, to, to make sure. But now, uh, are you using a camel bag or? No, I think I'm just going to have a water bottle off to the side. 32 ounces open ready to get ready to go yeah i think so too because i've been debating if i'm gonna have a camel back or not mm -hmm. but the camel back i think after a while is gonna be rubbing See, too much and, and that's another thing too like the camel back i think is a great idea because it's pretty small and it doesn't weigh a lot mm -hmm. but anything that's gonna possibly create Could any be, discomfort or something that i haven't tried in my training sessions yeah. It's not a good time to, to introduce to, to that put stuff it, yeah, right, yeah. right when you get going. Don't on try anything event. new. On <laughs> no, don't, don't Never. wear flip flops or, you know, don't go barefoot for some reason on this round because you didn't, you know, whatever you did in training, stick to that. Yeah. You're obviously going to veer depending on that day um, during the event. You're going to kind of go one way or the other to, as far as like what's just uncomfortable, what's feeling good, what's not feeling good. But, you know, if you can pretty much stick with what you were doing in your training sessions, wearing the same type of clothes, having the same butt pad, exactly. doing that sort of thing, you should be pretty well prepared for this. So, Yeah, so that's going to be very, very uh, interesting to see. The only thing I'm putting in new, but I'm testing actually today, just to make sure is the butt pad, because yeah. I just got it. But mm -hmm. um, And to be honest, if that's shaking too much, I'm just going to take it out. Right. The nice thing about it. the butt pad that, so Rob Mayer, um, picked up some butt pads off of Amazon and then he bought me one and, and Rich bought one. It's specifically set up to latch on and fit specifically for a rowing seat and then it has straps on it so that it doesn't have it too doesn't, much yeah, room in either yeah. way. It's basically like the uh, styrofoam cushion. It's about, what, four or five inches thick. Just kind of helps create a little bit of a, a comfort, I guess, um, right. while you're rowing and especially for long distances. So Now, I, I didn't realize how big is indoor rowing. To be honest, because uh, after I started to, to do, I actually started to follow a concept on Instagram. And I was amazed of like how many world records there is for yeah. it. And like I actually saw a guy that he, I think he wrote like 100,000, I think. But he had a pillow. Like I swear to God, like one of the pictures, the guy is wearing a pillow <laughs> under his butt. And then I'm like, okay, I'm not the only one that's gonna suffer with this. Yeah. So, you know, like they all make it like different uh, arrangements, but the guy broke a record. I think, I don't remember how much he did, but he did six hours and six minutes, like on nonstop on the road. Right, there was a, um, <clears throat> a 76 year old a couple months ago. He did the rowing marathon and I think it took him a little over 525, I think it was like 526 uh, or something like that. 76 years old and he, he was on the rower for five and a half hours. I mean, that's, crazy. that's impressive. That's and crazy. that's that's awful. I think his his pace was like a 330 or something like that. So I mean, really slow, monotonous pulls, sitting on the rower for five and a half hours, mm -hmm. being 76 years old. And he was a pretty, pretty kind of petite, mm -hmm. frail kind of looking guy. but. I mean, just the, the look of him after he was done was just amazing. Yeah. You know, well, so 76, like, man, it's That's what it's I'm saying. Crazy. I'm like, if he can do it, I can probably, it may not be the fastest time, but I can suffer through it and I can yeah. complete it. Yeah, that, that's what I, I tell people when I train people to in a marathon. It's like, listen, if you want to train, if you're going to, if you want to do a marathon or anything like this, you got to have at least some sort of training because, you know, like to be, like six hours running or rowing without any training, it's awful, it you know, awful. like, and I bet this guy probably trained it quite a bit and he was ready for it, but, you know, like, if, 
if somebody's younger or or something they decide to do something like that you must train because well i mean you know, you know like, i didn't <clears throat> honestly i didn't i didn't put a lot of training into this i mean well but one, you know but one, you're a fit guy you know like you do two times a week i wouldn't say yeah. is necessarily the greatest <laughs> training methodology to have if you're going to do something like this but i think with past experiences and with mixing in crossfit and you know being athletically inclined in, in, in most areas i think that's that's helped me set up for that. But now, yeah, on the other end, you you know what to expect. Right. On the know. other end of that, I didn't really. I'm glad that I trained like I trained, because I didn't know how I was going to feel at 10,000 exactly. meters. Yeah. I didn't know where my hands were going to start blistering up. Exactly. Yeah. And and if you don't have those expectations going in, and those things arise during that, it just it can completely. Ruin oh yeah. It yeah. can completely ruin the whole event. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I'm glad that. I'm, I'm not happy that I didn't go more meters during my training sessions, but I'm happy that I did what I did to experience what I experienced. Yeah, but you know, on a physiological standpoint, and you know, I tell a lot of people that when I train, like, for example, when I was racing Ironman, like the longest run I ever done was like 18, and sometimes like my best Ironmans actually was like when I ran 16 at the most, yeah. because like for a physiological standpoint, sometimes going too long, it's actually more damaging to the body than anything right. else right. like I chose to do 35 just because you know like I'm finally coming back to shape now right. so I wanted to make sure that you know like I was able to to finish this and, and not, not look like a full live on Facebook right. well, this, well even you know, being but, an endurance athlete like you a professional endurance athlete um, you know you you go through the same things that we go through and exactly and, yeah. you know and not every run is a great run and not every swim is a great swim and yeah. you know so hopefully the day of everyone's feeling good everyone's energized and i, I think, think i think like everybody as far as like i talk to uh i talk to rob and i talk to chris and i've been talking to all the hundred i i help him on, on training volume a little bit too Uh, just to kind of give him some ideas of because right. he I don't think he ever like when I met him like I think 5,000 was the most that he wrote mm -hmm. and he's like I don't like endurance and he was like I don't even want to do this stuff he just gave me the idea to do it like you do it you crazy right. but uh, I think like everybody's pretty much on the same page that we are and I think everybody's like mentally ready yeah. and I think everybody to, that joined us Uh, they are into the purpose. Oh yeah, you know, like, so. for sure. And I think that helps you push past those moments because there's, there's been plenty of times in my training sessions where I start to kind of doubt myself a little bit and like, why I don't want to do this like right now. I'm not, I'm not motivated to do this. And then I just, I think of Luke, and when he was here with the competition that we talked about weeks ago when he saw you do your first comp, and even when he came in today and how he giggles and laughs when you guys are working, yeah. out, he loves that and it's like, that's why, yeah. you know, and that's why, and, and hopefully that's. That's what helps me get through some of those rough patches during this well, week, too. I got good news for you. Uh, we are planning to bring him on that day oh, well, here, <laughs> at least for a few hours, Hallelujah. just to <laughs> kind of help out. So I think that's going to be like a huge, uh, a huge incentive uh, because I remember when I did a 24-hour pedalboarding, I it was like a, a, it was a mile and a, almost a mile and a half lake. So pretty much every three miles, I was passing at the same spot. Right. Um, And uh, like I started and I had breaks every three hours that I would come in and just like refill my hydrate, uh, hydrate and stuff like that. <clears throat> and, uh, and I saw him in there, you know, like I know it's my son, but like whenever you're doing something for uh, somebody else or a purpose, like when you see that purpose right in front of you, yeah. it's like it's a boost of energy. It you is. Know? You know, like I've been telling people, I told my wife especially, I said, I feel like at the end of that row, I'm gonna just be like overcome with emotion. Not for oh, the yeah. fact that I actually did it and completed it, but for the fact that what, why we did it. And I think that's what's gonna be, that's, that's gonna be very uh, empowering to me, yeah. I think. Yeah, so, it's like, I, when, we first, when I did my first 5K with Luke, you know, like that he was like screaming, just like he did today, you know, like he's, he loves yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And then when I, I remember when I crossed the finish line, I cried more than my first Iron Man, you know. <laughs> and my first Iron Man, I felt like, what the hell is wrong with me? I was just crying there. Like, I, I can't believe it, I had done it. And when I crossed the 5K with him, it was way worse than right. before, you know. So it's like I, that, that environment and, you know, like, I think uh, yeah. him coming up and uh, uh, I think it's going to be a pretty right. cool, pretty cool setup. And I think... Mm -hmm. 
we're ready to, to rock and roll. Yeah, I think we're ready to go too. You know, we'll just have make sure we have some standby batteries in case anyone's, you know, batteries happen to default or anything yeah. like that. And like I said, if it happens to where somebody has to go to the bathroom and their screen shuts off, we know that they stopped at they stop 20K. At 20K we yeah, keep going yeah. for another 21K. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not necessarily, like I said, it's not about the numbers. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we want to go to 42, 195. But it's just and about it's not a competition. It's you not know, a like competition. We're, we're here for a common purpose. And, uh, you know, like it's about finishing. Yeah. Of course, like as an athlete, you always like, hey, let's push a little bit more. Let's right. let's take the, the to the next level. But, you know, it, mm-hmm. in the end, you know, like I think the whole group that like your whole gym, you know, like I, and I, I must say, like I, I joined a CrossFit Perfectus and I, I'm, a, I'm a big guy with um, with feelings, you know, like I can feel energy yeah. pretty easy. And then I remember uh, the day that I came into this door of like, okay, this is the gym that I want to be That's in. Awesome. And, uh, and you know, like the, the whole environment of people, like I come here to, to train and everybody's asking like, how train is going, you know, like you're ready for it. Yeah. And some people even like, you're gonna do the whole thing of like, yeah. And then I think after they saw me doing the 35, they were like, okay, you know, like he, he's, he's definitely ready he's for it. Bullshit. He's not bullshitting <laughs> anybody. You know, like he's not just gonna try to do it and not and you know, like whatever happens in the middle. Right. So, but what I want to say is like your gym, man, is like probably one of the best gyms I ever been in my life. It's like the environment. It's it's amazing, and I think uh, uh, and I want to like to thank everybody that is doing this because it's been such a, a, a important thing for me and to see the, the support that you guys do. It's the same thing today, like we came uh, like three minutes late on the class, uh, the warm up is starting up, but you know, when you told us like, hey, if that's the deal that we need to have you, my wife and I here for the first time and we look, uh, if that's the deal of being a few minutes late, I'm okay with that. So I just wanna like thank you, and, you know, like I really appreciate that and uh, uh, thank everybody from the CrossFit Perfectus right. and everybody on the CrossFit community that when we talk about this, they think it's amazing and yeah. things like that. And, so. and we've, been <clears throat> we've been sharing this event on social media platforms. We've been sharing it with other CrossFit gyms. We've been sharing it with our CrossFit athletes. We've been sharing it with friends and family. Um, you know, so it's never too late to so keep spreading the word. This isn't this isn't by any means going to be the last of of you seeing us do more awareness work for 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 the Luke Bygan Foundation. So, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily need to be a row next time or anything extreme, but we do want to make sure that by spreading through awareness and then accepting some donations and small donations at at that, you know, this will help fund some more research. This will help fund some more. Uh, Rich and, and his wife do a lot of foundation stuff through through the Luke Wygon Foundation where they're not only helping Luke they're also helping other families that are in needs with with kids with disabilities and what have you so um, you know supplying wheelchairs and supplying cars that help lift wheelchairs in the cars yeah. and stuff like that so you know this is this is just scratching the surface but I think if we're, we're doing our part and we just want to make sure that everyone else is doing their part too yeah and definitely it's not gonna be the last thing you're gonna hear even after the event because what I have planned I want to sit Afterwards, I want to sit with everybody that did the full one, and we can do kind of like a podcast, like a big podcast that we all talk about right. our struggles and what it hurts more, and what it didn't hurt, and uh, all that stuff. Because I think, you know, like deep in the end, you know, like I, I see, like I actually, you know, like the other day I actually updated the, the website because uh, I think that to be an athlete is to overcome challenges. Oh, yeah. And when I look at Luke, I see him as an athlete. You know, people might think that like, oh, he cannot lift things, but that kid works harder than any other two-year kid that I ever met. You know, like he goes to therapies and stuff like that. He's always smiling. So to be an athlete, it's about overcoming challenges. And I think that those people who have physically, they're being physically challenged since born, they are true athletes. So, and this is what, I want, you know, like, even though we don't have technically a, a, a physical challenge, but we challenge ourselves to help others. And I think that awareness and understanding, like, the struggle that we're going to go through in order to, you know, create some of this awareness is very important. Well, that's what we talk about, doing it for a higher purpose. Exactly. Right? And that's, that's why we're here. So, you know, and <clears throat> we'll see how, how I walk off the rower, <laughs> but, or if I can even walk for a while. But, 
you know, it's th this will be a good event. And I think having Luke here, I think it's going to lift his spirits a little bit. I think hi having him here is going to lift everyone else's spirits exactly. a little bit. Um, it's just, you know, we're here as a family and we're doing this together and we're all going to complete it. All right. So now to close it out, uh, and then we can confirm later, but I just want to ask, do you expect the next day to be horribly sore? No. Besides your butt? Absolutely not. All right. Mm -mm. And I'm sure you've experienced it too. It's, it's the weirdest ex feeling that you'll have during that row, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000, whatever, 30, yeah. up to 35,000. Mentally, you're just so fatigued. Physically, your body's just moving because that's what it needs to do. And then literally all that pain within like 10 minutes of being off the rower is gone. It's gone, yeah. Um, a little bit of sore butt, maybe a little bit of a back. Other than that, I mean, it's while you're doing it is the worst pain. Afterwards, you probably, I mean, not, I haven't rowed the whole thing, so I can't tell you exactly, but after rowing 23,000 or whatever meters I did for training, I got up and within 10 minutes, I felt like I was, I was pretty good. Yeah. Um, the next day, you know, like I said, just some sore butt cheeks and whatever else. But other than that, um, no, I don't, I feel like I could hopefully be able to work out the next Yeah, you're going to be fatigued. but going to be you fatigued know, yeah. for sure, yeah. Yeah, I it, think, it's, it's weird because it's different than running. Like when you run for the first time, like a 35K, right. you're like, even if you go really slow, you're still sore because that pounding hurts yeah, a lot. Yeah, and that's the cool thing about the rower. For, so for some of you guys out there that don't really enjoy running, you've never really experienced the rower, if you want something that's low impact, that's non-weight bearing, and you want to get a good workout and conditioning wise, total body wise, the rower is where you it's should be. Right? The rower is where you should be. Um, you know, running and rowing are obviously two different modalities of, exactly. of exercise, and I think they, they feel different. But if you do ever have any limitations or joint issues or bad backs or anything like that, rowing is probably the thing that you should be doing most. Mm -hmm. you're, gonna, you're gonna get a lot more benefit from doing that than you would an elliptical or even walking on a treadmill. Exactly. You know, get on that rower and, and, and do some things. So, do you have any, uh, you want to say something for anybody that ever thought about joining the CrossFit or doing something like that? Uh, yeah. And what it makes a difference from you guys, just to kind of close it out? Well, I think for me, if, you know, my mentality about things is that if I've never done it before and it's somewhat of an intriguing thing to me, I might as well try it and give it a chance. Um, and I think that's, with CrossFit, there's such a stigma with that. High intensity, lifting crazy heavy weights, bad form, people yelling at you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's completely opposite of that. And I think for you to, to make your own um, assumptions about CrossFit, you need to come in and try it out before you make those assumptions. Um, so my thing is try it. Before, give it a chance. Give, give everything a chance. a chance before you uh, make an opinion about it. I mean, you'd probably more, be more likely surprised that it's, it's not what you thought it was. And that's, that's in a good way. So, um, yeah, I think people should, you know, if it's not CrossFit, Get out and be active. Go go and ski if you've never skied. Go and swim if you don't know how to swim. Yeah, but Get swim I, I lessons think, if you've never, you know. I so. think the benefit of CrossFit, it's just like you said, is a stigma. And the benefits are so, yeah. so much that, you know, like, uh, give it a try. I was one of the guys that in the beginning I was skeptical about it when they first came out the CrossFit. Right. Uh, and, you know, like, but I was a triathlete on that time. It was a whole different story. Uh, but I look at it of like, yeah, okay, you know, like, but when I tried, I was like, this is pretty cool, you know, right. like, and I didn't go to a good gym, you know, like, but if you find a good gym with good coaches, you know, like, that's well, I, very, I, very I important. I think that's the other thing, too, is you don't necessarily have to commit to CrossFit right away. Go out, do your research, go to a couple different gyms, you know, find, find an environment that fits your needs, find a community that fits your needs, find the coaching that you want the best, find the programming that you want the best. It takes a little bit of accountability on our parts, not as a business owner, but as an athlete, to hold ourselves accountable to what we want and how we're going to get there. And if you don't do that, you're always going to rely on somebody else doing it for you. And it's easy to always point the finger when things are going wrong. Exactly. You know, so you go out there, research gyms, you know, drop into a couple different classes and find the community, find the environment, find the coach. And, and find the coaching that, that you want. Find that's the, that's you want. the most and important. And I think that is the most important because a lot of times when you're not going to a, a structured class as CrossFit or some of those other exercise programs, you're, you're missing out. You know, you're basically getting a personal trainer every single day 
for a lot less than what you would get, get from an actual get. personal for a person trainer. trainer yeah. you know, so and plus, it, like some of the personal like trainers, they spend more time on the phone than yeah. actually looking at you. They're, they're up to date <laughs> on their Facebook more than they are about yeah. your bicep press. I, I remember so. like when I used to actually be a member of a gym and then I would come in and then the guy is doing the exercise totally wrong and the trainer is on the phone. It's like, yeah. So it's just like I said, uh, uh, I always say like there is, there is good coaches and there's like other coaches. So you gotta find the one that fits for you. Right. And like, and I am extremely believer that how uh, uh, CrossFit can benefit and how CrossFit is benefiting my life too because I, I calculated the other day, I usually do about 60 squads with Luke a day and he's 30 pounds. But CrossFit is giving me that functionality to like, okay, I can hold him for a long time without being fatigued, you know? So without putting him down, having to put him down or whatever. So that, like, functioning-wise for life, I think it's uh, a very, very important thing, and CrossFit is a very good way to get fit. Right, like you're, you have a dual purpose. You're doing things for you physically and mentally for you, yeah. and then that's also benefiting by, able to, by uh, being able to help yourself. To help, yeah. So. All right, guys, so I talked to here with Graham from CrossFit Perfectus. Uh, check us out on, the, on his website, um, check us out on my foundation website, uh, and next Wednesday we're going to be rowing 42, 195,000 meters to... <laughs> he is. <laughs> <laughs> ...to a good cause called Nemalai Myopathy, so check it out, guys, uh, and if you ever, if you listen to this and you're not in Colorado, uh, and you stop in, and you stop by Colorado. Just stop by the best CrossFit that I know here. Thank you. Uh, and if you are in Colorado and you're not in CrossFit Perfectors, you're missing out, buddy. So right. check it out. Uh, join us, and I see you probably Wednesday live on Facebook and Instagram. A dead on the mission. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys.